Okay. Okay. Um, the next speaker is uh, Yesha Siwan, and um, he's noted for uh, being one of the uh, small group who were asked to give their opinion um, in the last, what was it called? The Metaverse from the Virtual Worlds uh, Symposium? There was a, what, was the, uh, what was the name of the magazine or the, the article that was written? Yeah, it was from the Virtual World uh, News. Virtual. Well, you, anyway. Virtual Worlds. Yes, Virtual Worlds, exactly. So um, he was one of, the, uh, one of the professionals who was asked his opinion on the future, etc. Um, and I believe you're going to uh, describe to us tonight uh, about education, but also, um, uh, what is it, um, a movie or a film, uh, a media standard for, uh, for virtual worlds, I believe, correct? Right, right. I'm going to put that at the end as the icing. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Um, well, I'll just let you get to it. Um, yes, yes, Ivan, please take over. Okay, guys, um, so I, I basically assume that you see the set of slides uh, that are in yep, front of yep, you. Yep, we've got that. Um, what I try to do in this uh, presentation is actually to give you a feel of a course that I'm uh, running uh, actually for the fourth time, and I... Um, we call it a sort of virtual worlds one, and, and it's the 2008 model because you know it is is changing. So I think what I'm going to do is just go through this description of what we are trying to do, and if we actually have a little time, then we can actually go and tour this island and see um, some of the stuff that I've that I've talked about. Um, So um, when, when we struck uh, a course, uh, pay attention to the current state of the virtual world, which is basically, it's a very technology and an application, but it's simply not uh, there. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity, but it's still not really working. Uh, and I really appreciate the, the, the difficulty you were able to overcome here. Um, but it's a very uh, worthwhile topic to teach, and this is uh, uh, one example of um, uh, doing it. So, in two. Uh oh. Oh, oh dear. Oh, that had to happen at some point. Hmm? It had to happen at some yeah, point. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <coughs> Say again? <laughs> well, but, and listen to really bad sound. Didn't don't don't you remember the very first one? The one that the one that we tried to speak in Second Life it was terrible. It was, you couldn't hear anything. Hello. Ah yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we just lost you for a sec. We lost. Me. Do you want to re repeat, or shall I continue over the phone? Just, just, uh, just, just continue. But, uh, but oh. we, we don't have your video. Okay. Anyhow, you you saw me. I'm, you don't need to see that. Actually, I would be able to actually take you in the car. So that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. So, basically, um, in terms of background, uh, this is the fourth time I'm running this course, and I had. Uh, sort of four uh, versions of it, although it's pretty much the same thing. The first uh, version that I did was last year, first semester, which was for general engineering courses and introduction to the metaverse and virtual environments. I also did a, a similar course in a computer science course where we did more advanced uh, projects that had to do with the um, uh, motion planning for uh, robotics. A third version was actually uh, an executive MBA course that we did um, that had a, essentially two parts to it. One was basically introducing the virtual world, and the other one was the process of coming up with new products and new ideas and have them experiment and actually working together in this environment. And that was sort of a simulation of a business game. And then uh, last but not least is a course that I'm actually doing right now, which is um, specifically for software engineering and design. 
in the um, Shinkar Accords here in Israel. So I've, uh, I was able to actually tune it and, and sort of uh, find the right uh, uh, method and, and to constantly adapting it to you know, the state of the art of, of uh, Second Life. It, my, as an educational point of view, I really wanted to focus on both the theory and practice. I had a dual goal of talking about the virtual world, but also teach about doing, which is sort of idea finding, solution planning, risk taking, management, etc. All the world, the work was done in an island, which we are actually uh, on right now, it's called the Metaverse Island, uh, Metaverse Labs Island, and we will actually see that. There were about, the average was. 20, 25 students, but it also had a bigger class. Of, one of them was 40 students. And um, in terms of the structure, uh, the initial tasks were done individually, and the final projects were done in pairs, uh, not three people, not more, but just two people uh, to do that. Class was um, you know, 13 uh, um, meetings, two hours of class, and then following immediately two hours of a lab in a sort of a computer setting. Um, the entire work is basically accompanied by a book uh, that I wrote uh, uh, called the 3D, 3C Metaverse. Currently, it's in Hebrew, but there's sort of a, an English version coming up on that. So they had a sort of a very uh, structured um, theoretical um, book to follow on. Uh, before I sort of delve into this uh, actual uh, discussion, I wanted to talk a little bit about the terms, and this is actually an interesting um, uh, slide that I've created directly from Google where I actually compared uh, a set of terms that I think are relevant to what we are doing. Uh, I compared virtual reality, metaverse, augmented reality, and virtual reality. Um, and. Uh, um, Robert uh, knows me, so he knows me very well. I, I like very much the term metaverse. I think it's a very uh, unique uh, term. Unfortunately, it's not very popular. And uh, when I sort of decided on the sort of the latest name, initially it was called sort of Metaverse 101. So the latest name is, is Virtual World. And if you actually look at the chart there, you can see that the term virtual reality is really going down, although it's still high. The term virtual world is, is coming up. Augmented reality is in the middle there, and of course, one never sees uh, the term metaverse. And this is from the, the millions of uh, searches people are actually doing in Google. So the bottom line of this is that we chose uh, essentially um, virtual world as sort of the term that we are using. The course is uh, structured uh, very simply, and this the table of the sort of uh, names of the, of the lessons, the tasks I give, and when I expect them to submit the task. Um, we start with a short introduction to virtual worlds. We go into building. We introduce basic programming. Uh, and again, we are not building into that more deeply. There's sort of an advanced course where we actually do advanced programming. But I sort of figure out that in short period of time, you cannot really teach people uh, a lot of programming. You need to teach them a little bit, especially for those students who want to delve into it. We have a, um, a one class about technology. We have a class about business models. And essentially, after that, we start with um, actually thinking and actually posing and giving feedback to the students. There is a test. Uh, which is basically just for concept. Uh, it's a, a multiple choice uh, test, and it's based on uh, the concept that we talked about uh, earlier. Um, they have to submit uh, a planning presentation. They get a structure for that. Then we have three classes of a workshop where we actually work together in a lab setting to give them feedback on the project, and then they have their final project. In, in the final presentation, they have to submit a point and a movie that describes their project. Um, regarding the specifics of the tasks, they are very structured and very simple, so they make them do what they need to do. The first task being the avatar. They need to take a picture of themselves near the sign of the uh, lab. Uh, they need to make a car. 
they need to write a small problem. Again, it's a very, very detailed uh, lesson plan, so it's, uh, they get a very detailed task for that. Before the test, this basically the 20 most uh, important concepts that they uh, felt uh, they have learned from the book and from, from the classes, uh, and then we sort of take all the uh, concepts that they did, we, we mix them together, and that is actually the seed for the actual test. They have to prepare uh, a planning presentation, and then they have to um, uh, do a packaging of a product. That includes putting it in SL Exchange and setting up um, the uh, setting up for sale and setting putting it in, inside something that people can actually buy. It. That's basically the, the lesson plan. It, it lets me delve into a few key points that we talk about when we do this class. The first, uh, we try to define a virtual world or advanced virtual world as uh, what I call 3D and 3C. 3D meaning uh, controllable three-dimensional environment. Uh, the three Cs, uh, community, uh, creation and commerce, uh, and we basically say that you know once you understand that the merge of these four factors creates the metaverse, then you can come up with new and interesting ideas for for projects. So that is sort of part of the short introduction that we do. We also compare and contrast uh, several uh, uh, engines and several worlds out there. Again, I'm not going to delve into that just to show you what we um, do in terms of analysis. Um, when we talk about the technology, uh, I roughly divide it into servers, networks, client, and social design, and we basically review this. The, the purpose of this, again, it's basically you know, one class, so the purpose of this is to give them an overview of the various technologies, and then they can actually send send them out to search uh, and, and, and seek new knowledge if they need to, not to um, leave them with the impression that it was invented yesterday. I mean, we all know that the entire technology has been here for a long time. It just, it's now maturing into something that we can actually use. Uh, when we talk about business, we talk about what other companies are doing in Second Life and generate ideas as to what potentially they can do uh, in Second Life as a company, what, for example, what would they propose to Coca-Cola to do uh, instead of what is a separate, so that's the sort of mental exercise for the project. We also talk about the problems that we now see in, in Second Life being the platform of choice for the class, and we especially talk about the different numbers and, uh, you know, the, 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 the over uh, numbers and this is sort of an interesting chart that show how many people logged in, and you can see uh, the top that you know it was uh, two million and three million, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then towards the end, uh, on November 18th, uh, that number is no longer presented at all because uh, I figured LinkedIn Lab sort of decided that really that number doesn't mean anything. Um, so we talked about that and um, sort of share the distance between the uh, promise and, and the actual um, number of users that currently we have in Second Life. Uh, before we sort of um, try to sort of walk around and see beyond it, let me just add, you know, I, I, I thought of, of very concrete tips for people who are actually doing education in um, Second Life, so just set up concrete tips. First of all, a very important point is to uh, set the size of the interface to uh, 1.25 or even 1.3. That, that really allows people to actually see what you're doing. I don't know how many people are familiar with that um, uh, feature, but as you can see, it's, it's right there in the preferences. Um, and Robert, you can actually show them uh, exactly where it is. Um, this is very important because that people, uh, when, when you demo things, they really need see what you are actually demo demonstrating. Um, the second thing is that really the task, especially the initial task, it needs to be very simple, yet needs, needs to show, show something. So 
The first task of showing my avatar, which looks very simple, and the only thing they need to submit is a picture of them near the sign of the lab, that means that they were able to log in, they were able to find a particular place, which I don't give them a hint to, so they have to look for search. They have to go over out of orientation island, and they have to have control over the camera, and they have to know how to take a picture. So when they actually submitted that, they are actually ready to continue with the class. I think that's got to be his connection, not ours. Yes? Back to Skype. Uh, yep, yeah, we're, we're we're back again. Um, maybe you can. I'm I'm a little bit worried about our Skype connection. Is there a way that we can that we can speed it up just slightly so that we can fit it in before the next break, before it breaks down uh, again? Uh, sure. I didn't hear. Can you repeat it? Um, just to maybe speed it up a, a little bit for uh, so that the so that the uh, um, sure. so that we fit it in within Skype sure. within sure. before it breaks down again. Okay, so the, the, the bottom line, uh, I think, in, in terms of the, of the tip is that uh, we figure it's a very, very, very powerful learning, learning experience for students. And we're talking both sort of third and engineering students as well as students. And we get amazing responses from people uh, after this sort of, and we do help overcome the initial barrier um, talking about you know this is the learning environment we are actually learning great we're learning to deal with problems etc et so that is um, the small take on on this uh, particular course uh, how are we doing in terms of time um, we're, we're, we're okay with time I'm more worried about the technology I, I think maybe the link with Israel is uh, is a little bit less uh, less strong um, yeah. why, don't, why don't you move on to um, onto the, the video standard? I'm curious to hear about that, and I think the audience is as okay. well. Okay, sure. Um, so, so this is basically the side of my work, um, sort of the, the teaching and, and talk about how Second Life is being used. The side of my work is a joint product that I have with few companies in Europe, uh, namely Philip and Alcatel Lucent and Telefonic. And it's called um, Metaverse One. And the goal of Metaverse One, and I had a whole presentation just on that. It's, it's on the blog, and people can actually see that video presentation. The goal of that uh, Metaverse project, which is a three-year project, is to really with standards that would allow um, the Metaverse to block, or sort of virtual world to blossom. And we are um, going to be force behind a new standard called uh, MPEG, uh, MPEG for virtual worlds, and that MPEG is going to allow people to get streams of virtual world uh, in a standardized fashion. Um, this is a this is a huge promise. Uh, as as I currently see it, uh, we do have a system that follows a gaming world where one company controls the entire, as opposed to the internet world, where companies that are uh, continuously with each other to, to come up with new and interesting things for parts of the staff. Uh, and and actually, there are other um, play in that standardization front um, coming up from the U.S. I know Sun is working with a uh, um, product called Blackstar, trying to you know, do a Java for for the virtual world. I know IBM is working several things. But that particular uh, effort that um, uh, working with the people in Europe, Metaverse One, is now uh, pushing MPEG V. Um, Oops. Okay. Uh, we lost that last bit, uh, Yesha. The, the, what? The the one after Metaverse One that uh, that Europe is pushing. 
Okay, basically, bottom line is that if it works, if the MPEG V words, uh, works, then we in a very good position uh, having a technology structure that is similar to the internet as opposed to a engine that we have now in Second Life or any other single engine out there but it's still a single engine. Do you think uh, it would help with communication at all? It would, it would boost this whole uh, idea because uh, as it stands, you know, are very talented people, but you know there are only few of them work on parts of the equation. If we have thousands and thousands working on on different parts of it, have a much better of of coming with the technology as wide as the. Internet. On the other hand, one needs to remember that the technology is much more complicated. It's a hundred times more complicated than the. Internet. So we do need some here, and we do need some uh, to move it forward. And, and that's the reason we really started this one, and, and now MPEG-V as, as the result of this. And MPEG-V is a well-known uh, standardization process that was a lot of good things. So we are, you know, we feel good with this, with this structure. Excellent. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Yesha. I'm a little bit worried about our connection. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Uh, sorry? Oh, that, that's good. Wait, Yeroen, you had a question? What was your question? No problem. I just wanted to make sure that I understand it because uh, sometimes your, uh, uh, it fell away so I couldn't really understand it. Uh, the format you were uh, talking about, MPEG-V, is it meant to be over all different worlds, like SL and other worlds? The, yeah. the, the answer is yes. The, be the best way and simple to uh, phrase it, MPEG-V is going to be something like HTML in the sense that Lots of people can generate it, and lots of others can read it. Now, the, uh, all oversimplification, we know virtual words are much more complicated than that, but that's fine. The bottom line is that you will be able to, um, in a sense, take your from one place to another, in a sense, to take your objects to another. Excellent. Uh, I think, I think that's, that's interesting. Okay. Yesha, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We were, uh, it was a little bit of a rough connection, but uh, I think the idea was got across. Thank you.